wonderful story is that Ruth loved her mother-in-law Naomi. The word of God said that when they got back over to Israel, it was rough. And oh my God, it was Ruth who kept her mother, Jewish mother-in-law alive. The word of God said that Ruth went out and she cleaned the fields. And it's why she was in the field of Boaz, who was a kindred, and only she didn't know it, who was kin uh, to her mother-in-law. All at once saw this beautiful woman. And you know what? He went and to the elders, it says, 10 of them, and he said to them immediately, I want to tell you something. I know it may not be right with the book, but I've seen a woman that I'm going to marry, and I'm putting you on notice now. She's mine. And the word of God said that Ruth, this Gentile woman, you know, who moved from Moab into Israel, she married Boaz. And the word of God said that she became a mother. And not only a mother, but she became, as the genealogy of Jesus says, she became a part of the genealogy of Jesus Christ. You know what? She brought Gentile blood right in to Jesus' vein along with that Jewish blood that settled there too. She brought it in. She made a difference for Gentiles yeah. coming in. And you know what? There's only two books in the Bible named for women. And one of them is Ruth and the other one's Esther. And you know, I'm just surprised this week. My secretary who does this all the time, Frank Zarelli has a calendar, his trivia, and he comes in every morning, makes everybody in the offices, you know, all 17 people who are there, one at a time, answer the trivia question. And he came into the room, and it was real cute. He said, now I know you'll know this one. He said, but two of the clergy in this office had failed the test. He said they could not, how many books in the Bible were named for women? And of course, my Pentecostal background, born to Sunday school, I said two of them, and Ruth was one of them. Ruth, who defended the ancient. Ruth, who stood by her mother-in-law. Another person that I love in the Word of God that was a mother that has something to say to us this morning is Rahab. She was an unusual woman. This woman ended up marrying King Saul. And the Word of God said that something happened. One day, Saul had many, many wives, but she was one of those Jen Large family by him. One day Saul went out and slew the kindred of people who had made a covenant with Israel when they came into the promised land. When the Hebrew children came in, they had made a promise that even though they were Jews, they would not be put to the sword. They could stay on their land. And while Saul was king, one day he gave an order to go out and to slew many of these people. And immediately after Saul was defeated and later died on the battlefield, when David became king, whoever was the governor of that province came and said, We have an off with thee. You've done something wrong. Saul came in and took the lives of those that we coveted with Joshua in the earliest days when you came into this kingdom. And you said you would protect us. And now he slew us, and we demand a blood retribution. And the word of God said that David immediately ordered one of the families of Saul to be put to death. Now I want to tell you something. David didn't use good judgment that day. The word of God, never did God say to David to do this. But he took the sons of Saul, the word of God said, this particular group out, and he had them slain. And I want to tell you that mother that day, oh, and she sat and watched her children slain and hung out. That woman did something. The word of God calls her faith so great because that mother, then and there, even in death, the word of God says that she defended the death. Even when her children were hung out, what a horrible picture this is. Hanging out, destroyed, dead, and no one was supposed to touch those bodies. You know, they were uh, just hanging there. That mother got up. And the Word of God said she took a club. And I'm telling you, she defended the dead. She walked around there for all the weeks while those bodies rotted. She kept the vultures of the air away from her children, even in death. I want to tell you something. Later, King David and Israel apologized to that woman because she had done it. She defended the dead, even in death to make sure that nothing happened to them. We who are part of the Universal Fellowship of Metropolitan Community Churches, I can tell you now, Mother, this Mother Church that we're honoring today, Mother has defended the dead in this day and age, yeah. in this day of uh, people being ill and sick. This church has even defended the dead. Not long ago, Reverend Fred Phillips, who's a real nut, amen, in the state of Kansas, two weeks ago, demonstrated at First Metropolitan Community Church in Kansas City and disrupted 
a service for an AIDS patient. Broke him as those parents were sobbing over their lost child. Called him a faggot at the coffin. But I'm telling you, our people moved in on it. Even if we have to defend the dead, even if we have yeah, to defend yeah. the bodies that those we love, we're going to do it in this church. Hannah's one of my favorites too. Oh, Hannah. Hannah, who was barren. Oh, my goodness. And you know, when the culture tells you, you gotta have babies, you lesbians will understand this story right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> Mommy and daddy puts the pressure on you. Amen. You know what I mean? If you wanna have babies, that's wonderful and fine too, because we haven't had any babies. Amen. That's not what I'm talking about. But I do know, you know, that how our culture sometimes talks about barren women. And here was Hannah, Hannah, who loved her husband. and. Hannah's husband, of course, at that time period, a lot of males were polygamous, and he was, and he had lots of wives, but he loved Hannah. And Hannah, the Word of God said, prayed over and over again, I want to be a mother. I want to give birth. And oh, the Word of God said that her husband said to her one day, my God, Hannah, oh, he says, I, you know, in my love for you better than even ten children, you don't have to have ten kids. I love you, but it wasn't good enough. Hannah kept prevailing. Hannah kept crying. Hannah kept praying. Hannah went down to the temple, and the word of God said that when she prayed, she prayed, but just her lips moved. No words came out. People came over and made fun of her. And they wanted to know, are you drunk? What's the problem here? And finally, she told the religious leaders of that day, no, I'm praying that God will give me children. And you know something? The day came when she became a mother. And the first baby she had, it wasn't the only one, but the first baby she had that she had prayed for was the prophet Samuel. Oh my God. God gave him a prophet. Amen. Now let me tell you something. She prayed. And the word of God says that she gave him back to God. She didn't try to be, you know, crappy. She said, if I've got to give him to everybody, that's it. And Hannah did that. And the word of God said that Hannah only got to visit Samuel after a certain age as he grew up. Only one day a year. And she had bring him clothes, the word of God said that she had sung. And she had said and talked with him just that one day. But my God, she had produced a prophet of God for Israel. I want to tell you the history of Mother Church today. Since this is Mother's Day, this is not Troy Perry's Day. This is Mother's Day today. Amen. General Comfort, you honor Troy Perry. But here, this is Mother Church Day. Amen. And I want to tell you something right now. On this day, I'll tell you, our mother was born October the 6th, 1968. On the day mother was born, mother was also betrothed to her divine parent, by her divine parent, to the Son, our Savior, and Sovereign Jesus Christ. Right. Since that day, I want to tell you something. The mother church has been like those mothers in the Bible. Amen. It has continued to move forward and to do what God has called it to do. We praise and bless you, Mother, for giving birth to 10 churches, 38 grand churches, 114 great grand churches, and 118 great great grandchildren in 17 countries. about 50 of your children become clergy yeah. and your hundreds of children have birthed thousands more. Because of you, Mother, we all stand tall because you loved us when the world called us unlovable. Right. Yes. You welcomed us home yeah. when we were homeless. Come on. Mother Church, you made us into a family on, when we didn't even know we were brothers and sisters. Right. You called us beautiful when everybody else called us ugly, like you introduced us to Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. When most folks didn't believe Jesus could be ours, amen. Right. We love you, Mother Church. Thank you, Mother Church. Yeah. Happy Mother's Day. God bless you.